Hello. In this video, we will show how to integrate FortiOS with AWS GuardDuty and explain how to set up Lambda function. AWS GuardDuty is a service offering infrastructure-level monitoring and filtering of suspicious and malicious activity conducted against your EC2 assets. Its core capabilities are various indicators of compromise and IP blacklisting. Lambda function to be called in CloudWatch when GuardDuty sends logs to CloudWatch. This script will write the malicious IP to a dedicated file in an S3 bucket. Firewall service, i.e. for your OS, can pull this list and add those malicious IPs to the blacklist. Let's start with S3 bucket setup, which is needed to store the IP block list. Click on Create Bucket and enter your new S3 bucket name. Make sure you write the new bucket's name down, as you will need it for further steps. Please note, every AWS function is region-specific, and you will need to check the region you're working in for each step. Next, we will need to create a new DB table. One Dynamo DB table with the stream feature enabled is required to store records of malicious IP addresses from guard duty findings. Please make sure you have your new table's name saved, as you will need it for further steps. Next, we'll need to define partition and sort keys. For partition key, input the following value, and choose string from the drop-down list as its data type. For sort key, input the value of IP and choose string as well. Next step is to enable stream feature on this table. To do so, click on Manage Stream, choose Keys Only option, and click on Enable to save. Please note, you will need to write the latest stream ARN down as it will be used in the next step, which is IAM policy creation. Three policies apply to the IAM role. The first one is a user managed policy, which grants permissions to operation on the S3 bucket we created earlier. Click on Create Policy and choose S3 as its service. After it's done, specify the following actions. List bucket, head bucket, get object, put object, put object ACL. Next, let's choose specific in the resources section and add our new S3 bucket name for the bucket resource type to restrict access to any file in the specific bucket only. Use the same bucket name for the object resource type and the wildcard or an asterisk to restrict access to any file in the specific bucket only. Click on Review Policy, give the name, and click on Create Policy. The second policy is a user managed policy which grants permission to operation on the DynamoDB table we created earlier. Click on Create Policy and choose DynamoDB as its service. Once it's done, specify the following actions. List streams, describe stream, get records, get shard iterator, scan, and update item. Next, let's choose specific in the resources section, and for the stream resource type, copy paste the latest stream ARN we saved in the previous step. Leave all sections except stream table as is, and replace the stream table content with the asterisk wildcard to allow for access to any stream resource of the DynamoDB table. Use the same ARN again for the table resource type to restrict access to the specific table only. Give it a name and click on Create Policy. The third policy is an AWS managed policy, which allows the Lambda function to write logs to CloudWatch. First, we need to create one IAM role to run the Lambda function. Choose Lambda service that will use this role. Attach the two user managed policies created on the previous sub steps and the AWS managed policy called AWS Lambda Basic Execution Role to this role. Give it a name and click on Create Policy. Next step is to create the Lambda function. Let's start with creating a new function that authors from scratch. Give it a unique name, choose node.js space 8.10 as its runtime and select Choose an existing role. Choose the role created in the previous step and click on Create function. Now we need to download the deployment package from Get Project Repository. To do so, you need to open the following link, github.com slash fortinet slash aws dash lambda dash guardduty. Once it's open, click on Releases and download the latest version. We need this deployment package to set up function code. For code entry type, choose Upload a zip file, click on Upload, and choose the file we just downloaded. 
Next, let's set up environment variables. Please note, values for key fields are case sensitive and should be all in uppercase. Fill all the required fields with the following values. You can find all key value pairs by following the link to the readme guide you see below. Once it's done, change timeout value from 3 seconds to 15 seconds and save the lambda function. Next step is to create a trigger on the DynamoDB table. This trigger will cause the lambda function to generate a full IP block list to a static file in the F3 bucket. Click on the table we created earlier to toggle on its detail window. Next, click on the trigger step. From the function dropdown list, choose the lambda function we created in the previous step. At this point, our lambda function setup is over, however we still need to create an additional CloudWatch event rule to invoke the lambda function based on events happening in guard duty findings. To do so, let's select create rule and choose guard duty from the drop down menu for service name and guard duty findings for event type. Next, click on add target, select lambda function from the drop down list and choose the lambda function we created. Give it a name and check the enabled checkbox. Now, as our lambda function has been created and configured properly, we need to run a test. Simply go back to the AWS Lambda page, select the function we created earlier, and click on Test button. Next, we need to go back to our GitHub and open README Guide. Scroll down to the Test section and copy paste the following script. Give it a name and click on Create. Now, let's run the test. To verify the results of the test, check the record called Finding Entry and go back to the DynamoDB table created previously. Go to Items and you will see the same entry. Last step is to integrate AWS Guard Duty with our FortiGate. First, let's go back to our S3 bucket and copy the link named IP block list. Next, let's log into our FortiGate, select Security Fabric and click on Fabric Connectors. From here, we can create a new thread feed. There are several types of thread feeds, including domain name, which will allow us to use category based DNS filter. IP address, which can be used as a static domain filter, and FortiGate category, used to set up a web filter. To integrate our FortiGate with AWS Guard Duty, we need to use IP address thread feed. Give it a name and input the link we copied previously. Here we can see one valid entry from the test we ran earlier. Please note, Guard Duty service might need up to several days to populate the list. Once it's done, we need to click on Security Profiles and open the DNS Filter tab. Enable External IP Block List feature and select the Fabric Connector we just created. Now let's move to the final step, which is Policy Setup. Select Policy and Objects and click on IPv4 Policy. From here, we can create a new policy, which will allow us to use this thread feed we created earlier. If needed, we can add variable security profiles to our new policy such as antivirus, web filter, DNS filter, and so on. This concludes our FortiGate integration with AWS Guard Duty Overview. Thank you for watching, and for more technical videos, please visit video.fortinet.com.